Hi, my name's Ali Swires, and today I'm going to show you how I edited this image from Warburton, ugh, Warburton, Victoria. <laughs> Jesus. Um, I've got a bit of a case of the man flu today, and as you can probably already tell, struggling a little bit, so um, apologies. Um, like most males, I'm actually at home just wallowing in my own self pity and thought it'd be a pretty good opportunity to record this video. Um, so with this image, um, I actually post processed this a while ago and um, have added th this audio after the fact. I find sometimes talking as I'm editing can slow me down a bit and just I do silly things as I'm editing. So I'm just going to edit it um, and talk at key points of the image, but I'm, I will put myself on mute at times because I'm sure you don't need to hear me waffling on for the full 12 and a half or so minutes. So let's just start by actually looking at the two images. We've, this is the before image. As you can see, it's actually quite a nice image, but what you can't see is that um, the top half of the frame actually had a quite a bit of water droplets on it, so I lost a lot of detail around the trees, hence why I went down the path of introducing a light burst to the image. Just for full disclosure, the image is actually a three image composite where I've taken one, two, three, and then I've later stacked these in Photoshop as a panorama. It's worked out really well shooting with a 17 to 40 lens. However, it did introduce a fair bit of distortion shooting with such a wide lens. Um, in terms of panoramic tools, I really like both the Photoshop and Lightroom ones. Um, I used to be pretty big on PT GUI, um, but have since stepped away with it from it since Photoshop's upped its game. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm just doing some aggressive cropping and then I'm also going to use the content aware tool just to sneaky bring back some detail in the corners here. So next is just doing a bit of a lens correction. Um, shooting with a 17 to 40 you do get a bit of distortion so I'm just trying to bring a bit of that back and correct it a bit. It's probably not perfect um, but just with a bit of distortion correcting and some also some straightening just using the log in the middle as a bit of a center point just to sort of correct that as best as I can. So with that done I'm now going to transition the video um, and start looking at how I introduce the light burst to the frame. It's really a two-step process, one being a very aggressive light burst using the radial blur tool, um, and this one will probably be no surprise to most people, and the second one is something that I learned from Flern. So let's start with the first one. So I'm using the radial blur tool with a new layer, um, setting it to zoom with best quality and the amount being 100. I'm going to make the blur center to the top right hand of the frame. The reason being, I want to give the effect that the light's coming down from the right hand of the frame. Um, one of the key callouts to why I've done this is, is because I actually had a lot of water droplets on my lens, um, which basically meant I, I didn't really have an image to work with. So for that reason, I, felt, I thought using a sunburst in the corner could actually, I guess, bring the image back to light a bit, pardon the pun. So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm just adding a layer mask and then going to fill it with black and then subtly paint over the image with white just to reintroduce the radial blur back into the image. Um, a bit of a call out here is I didn't lose all the image to the water droplets and there is some sharp parts in the foliage which I want to retain but also really just to give you the, that effect that the light bursts coming through do look a little bit more realistic because you're not going to get a light burst that fully... Um, covers your whole scene. You're going to get like little bursts coming through. So what I'm basically doing here is in very fast motion just because I recorded this a while ago and sped up the footage. I'm basically just painting over parts of the image, um, more so just lines down it, um, just to sort of give, to, just to retain some of the original image and not make the whole top half of the frame a radial blur. Additionally, I'm also using a photo filter here to give that golden hour effect, something I'll look to refine as the video goes on. Oops, sorry, someone just came to the door. A bit awkward when you're sitting at your computer just talking into a microphone at your laptop. But um, yeah, we're back in action. Um, what I'm also doing here is I'm just dragging through some strips across the image just to give the effect um, of the light burst coming through the trees. Um, while I'm doing this, I'll just talk to the next technique that I'm going to do to the image. And it's something that I learned on um, the YouTube channel Flern. Flern's amazing in terms of the stuff that he's doing across all genres of photography. But in particular, his post-processing videos are just next level. Um, and I picked up a pretty cool technique which I'll be applying in this video. And I also look to apply it, uh, sorry, link to it in the description of this video. Just because he obviously explains it so much better than I.
So what I do now, I create a new layer um, and this is the flown technique. And once I've got that layer, I select the brush tool. And with the brush tool selected, I'm then going to the brush presets and just selecting a new brush. And then I'm also then going to start making some changes to the brush that I've got selected. First being the brush dynamics. With the brush dynamics selected, I bump up the jitter to max and then have the minimum diameter to zero. With this selected, I then go to scattering and then select both axis and then I'm going to increase the axis, sorry, the, increase the scatter. Um, next on the list is the brush to shape and just going to play with the spacing. This doesn't really matter too much and it's more of a personal taste. Um, once you start playing with it and get an idea of how the technique works, that's when you'll get an idea of how you may want it. So next up, I'm also going to then select the size of my brush and the colour to be something that's quite similar to a sunset colour or rather a golden hour colour, sorry. Um, while I'm doing this, I'm just flattering all the dots around where I'd hope to have some light beams coming through the image. At the moment, you're probably wondering, what the hell? And then I'm just applying a radial blur with the same settings that I had before. I've just sped up this a bit, as my MacBook does struggle a bit <laughs> when trying to do this. And there you go. It's just introduced a whole different technique of, layer, uh, of light bursts coming through my image. It's really neat. What I'm doing now is I'm just going back and forth between the image that I posted on social media just to see where I'm currently at in terms of whether it's looking similar or not. It's not really. Um, really, I think where I'm going wrong is the radial blur is too strong. You're not going to get a light burst coming through the trees this harsh. It's always going to be sort of balanced between the trees, which will create a bit of unevenness. So what I'm doing now is I'm just using my layer masks and painting over parts of the image just to give the light burst a bit more of a subtle feel. With this done, I'm now going back to the new light bursts I created and playing around with the hue, saturation and lightness of these light bursts and just warming them and increasing the saturation of them slightly. So next what I'm going to do is play around with luminosity masks. I'm not going to bang on it too much here because people like Sean Bagshaw have absolutely nailed it with some of their YouTube videos they've created. So what I'll do, I'll just link to those here, but in short, Luminosity masks allow you to select different, I guess, tone ranges of your darks, mid-tones and lights to make any types of adjustments you want. So this is, as an example, and what I'm doing right now is I've got my darks, a, a portion of my darks selected, and I'm just making some very subtle saturation and hue changes to the, this part of the image. Look, it might only be 5 to 10% of the image, but it just gives me a lot of granular control over my image. Um, it's probably a technique that I jumped on quite late with, actually, to be honest. I sort of thought it might have been a process that would slow me down. But um, depending on the image you're editing, it's oh, it's just a lifesaver in terms of the control it gives you over the image. Um, I'm a firm believer now, um, and we'll link to it in my video. So basically, what I'm doing here is I'm just going through the various different spectrums of my image and just applying some very subtle adjustments. This could be a photo filter, it could be saturation, or it could be curves just to bring out subtle parts of the detail. So what I'm going to do now is just disable all the layers uh, just to get a bit of a status check of how the image is looking. What you'll find is that the middle part of the water is probably a bit orange from the photo filter and additionally um, I think the Flurn light rays is what really starts to bring out the light rays and makes them look more natural as opposed to just the radial blur on its own which can be a bit overbearing. Um, next up on the image is I'm going to flatten the image and look I know it's not best practice to be flattening an image and getting rid of all the layers but it's more so for the purpose of this video just to sort of rush through it a bit um, and basically once I've got that flattened I'm going to start playing around with lens flare. Um, the reason I'm playing around with lens flare is I just want to try and make this light burst in the top right hand of the corner look more natural. Um, so apologies, there's a bit of experimentation that goes on here and a bit of back and forth. I think it takes me two attempts. Um, so yeah, look, just hang in there for a minute. But look, the key is here is just to really, I guess if you'd like, make that light burst feel more natural and give the sense that there is actually a, a light coming through the trees.
So I actually don't like some of the flares that are being introduced as part of the image. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm quite lazy when it comes to this, I'm just gonna use the Content Aware tool to sneakily get rid of them for the purpose of this video. How good's that? So quick. Closing out this video, I'm just gonna make some final luminosity mask changes, in particular around changing the color of the water. I'm gonna use a cooling filter here to try and bring back um, the blue to the image and get rid of some of the orange which I've introduced as part of the light flares. On top of this I'm also introducing some additional luminosity masks. What I love about luminosity masks is that you can make very granular changes to very small parts of your image whether that be bumping up say the shadows or um, slightly tweaking the hues to say 5% of the image. It's a great tool set to have in your bag and I recommend it highly. And that brings us to the end of the video. To the left, you can see the original image that we started with, and to the right is the post-processed image. I'd love to hear your feedback on the two images in terms of how you may have gone about things differently. I've got to emphasize that this was an experimental video for me in terms of trying out new techniques, so I'm the first to admit it's far from perfect, but would love to hear any feedback you may have through the comments section or through my website directly. Thanks for persevering with me, with my um, man flu. We got there eventually, and I hope this video was of use to you. Thanks for watching.